Hey everybody, it's Shelly, and this is Comfortably Blind. So I finally got around to um, talking about what's turning out to be my favorite kicking kick around everywhere camera, which is my Canon AL1. You you might have seen where I did a battery repair thing on a battery door repair on it, but I thought I would do uh, a little bit more on it. Um, now this is like the last of the A series, the A series Canons, and of the A series it differs than the other ones by the fact, well one of the biggest things was it has double A batteries. It takes double A batteries instead of the 4L44, 28A, 28L, 28, what else is there? So it takes takes actually this takes AAA batteries. Let's see if we can get that open without. Nah, we are, we're not going to try. We're not going to try. Takes AAA batteries instead of um, that the battery that goes in here and this has actually a grip built onto it. To me it's kind of like um, the T50 took a lot of cues from this. But yeah, we won't talk about that. The T50, the T50 is a an auto auto winder, but you have to. Um, it's a manual rewind. Now, so this has, and I'm not going to open it because I am on. I'm literally halfway through. Where is it? Literally halfway through a roll of film, and this is probably the third or fourth roll that I've shot with it. Um, and just I've just been loving this thing because it's well it's quite easy but and okay so it has a thousand one thousandths of a second shutter speed and your um, aperture is whatever you got on the on the aperture ring this one unlike the other ones except for the AV one the AV one um, you actually set your aperture here. The AL1, the AL1 and the AV1 are both aperture priorities where um, the A1, the AE1, the A1 program, um, they're uh, shutter priorities. They're shutter priority cameras. This one is an aperture priority. So basically what you do is you set your you set your aperture point it you know point it give it about a half a half a squeeze and it will decide on your on your shutter if you have it if you have it in the shutter in automatic with the a but it'll go you can also do this do this camera in fully manual, unlike the AV1, the AV1, it is, you can't mess with the shutter at all. The only way you can affect the shutter is by messing with the aperture, you know, and the light. You can also mess with the ISO. But this you can actually come in and directly, directly mess with the, with the shutter. And you push down on the center and then you can rotate it. So can go a thousand manually it can go a thousand on down to and then bulb and then you have I believe yeah you have on this one 60 would be your 60 would be your come up your um, setting for your your flash this is a hot shoe um, takes like the what is it the 199 177 um, I would imagine I've, I've run different ones on here but um, or if you've got like like an actual Canon flash it should set it on its own because you know this thing should be or this thing is aperture priority and it will select the shutter if you if you let it which is the reason why I really like this thing because you can you can set your depth of field and within reason of course um, the uh, 
it'll set the shutter. Unless it's on an extremely bright day, you're taking a picture of some, like a bright wall, white wall, and the shutter just won't be able to compensate. It won't go fast enough to compensate, then you're, you know. But other than that, if it's capable, also this one, this camera does not have, it does not have like a PC port for a flash. It doesn't have a suck down. It does have like a, a, a meter for, or a, so you can hold the aperture value or hold the shutter value. Like you, so you can set it up, push that, and it'll hold the shutter value. What this camera does have, we just talk about a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of things it doesn't have. So you, what this camera does have is, is um, focus assist. You, you can see the, all the lines on, on the mirror. Well, and if you lift up on the mirror, you actually have, let's see if we can get some light on this. You actually have a sensor on the back side. This isn't going to give me any, any light, is it? Anyway, you have a sensor on the back side that helps you, helps you focus. So light will go through and it'll, you know, different places and it will assist you on focus. And let's see if this will, see if you can actually see. No, we don't want to go that one. It, it was touted as a, as a, uh, autofocus camera but it's not an autofocus it assists focus let's see if we can do this without taking a picture just wasting a picture on my chest come on there should be see that hump right there there should be arrows Uh, let's see here. Maybe I'm not going to be able to do this. It's not looking good. Then you also have your meter up here. You also have your meter up here for what shutter it's going to call for or what shutter it wants at the various at the various apertures. Yeah, yeah, for some reason it ain't gonna, maybe there's not enough light in here. Anyway, so it will help you. It won't, it won't focus for you, but it will help you. So, um, and, and it does it with, it does it with those little lines in the, in the mirror, which kind of makes the, the viewfinder darker. You can't really see the lines, but it kind of makes the viewfinder darker than other ones, but eh, it'll work. So also, um, on this, so you got a thousandth of a, sh uh, of a second, up to a thousandth of a second down to a bulb, and you have on the ISO, here's your ISO ring here underneath the, the rewind knob, and it will go from, it'll go up to 1600, ISO 1600 down to 25. Down to 25 up to 1600. And you've got this little, this little uh, uh, grippy here to help you. And you have to push this button here to, to get it to move. And then you also have your battery check up here. And it, what, it, what the battery check does is you look through, let's see if we can get that again. That was luck of the draw. And then you battery check. Yeah, whatever. Oh, that's because I'm pushing the, lightly pushing the thing. There we go. Battery check by pushing the little, little black button. Now these, all the A-series take what they call FD, this is an, an FD 50 millimeter 1.8. I'd love to have a 1.4, but I haven't come across one yet. And this is a fairly, 
Well, they came on everything, but it's an awesome lens. And it's an F, the FD had this, had this ring around the outside that I've also heard it called breech lock. And what I kind of like about it is, so you line up your red dot with your red dot on the camera. <laughs> yeah, see if you can do this in, in the mirror. And a lot of times when you push it on, it starts rotating all by itself. See? It starts rotating all by itself. And you just kind of cinch it down. This is the breech lock or the FD, the original FD. Um, later, later, um, Canon came out with the FDN or the new FD. And where this one you just have to rotate it on and off, the ring on and off, this one actually has this little lock button. So to get the to so to get the the lens off, you actually have to push the lock button. So then you come in here, you line up your red dots, and you rotate the whole lens until it snaps. Then it clicks into place and won't go anywhere. Then to remove it. You push, you push the button, and then you rotate the rotate the whole lens to get it off. And the funny thing is, is this actually this stays still once you once you put it on. This stays still, and the outer barrel of the, the whole outer barrel of the lens rotates. Where where the old style the old style just this metal ring rotated. I kind of like. I've heard a lot of people badmouth these, but I kind of like them. Um, what else we got? Like I say, on this one, I ended up taking uh, every every one of these AV ones I've ever seen have the the doors the door latch is broken on the battery, all of them. This is your motor drive, and I've got the I've got the little piece that would go over it in the in the uh, uh, winder. In the the it's a Canon Canon A winder or Canon Power Winder A. The Power Winder A2 will fit as well. And the way you can tell the difference is the A the A has two pins. The A1 or A2 has four. And but the bottom of this one has two pins. And um, I can run I can run the uh, A2 on it. But it, I have to turn it to um, continuous to get it to actually work. Where this one, you just bolt it on and line everything up, bolt it on, turn it, turn it on, and away you go. And I think it will let this will actually do uh, rapid. Yeah, it'll do actually do rapid. I remember doing that. But um, the battery thing, this is just a simple picture hanger, like a brass picture hanger. That I that I flattened out and modded, and if I don't have if I don't have the power winder on it, I take that screw out there, and and screw it in there to give it a little to give it both support both ends. Otherwise, you know, otherwise I just hold it there with the winder, just make sure it's covering where the screw would be, and then put the winder on, then it doesn't mess with the drive. This is like the smallest screw I could find. I can't remember what it was. I think maybe a six, not a six millimeter, but an ASE, ASE six that I cut down tremendously. And that's holding the battery door shut. And, and it works rather well. Um, this camera come, come to me in a, in a set. I got two of them. Uh, they said that, the guy says that one works if you hold the battery shut closed, and the other one, even if you hold the battery shut, door shut, shut, it doesn't work. Okay, um, and sure enough, this one works just fine. Um, was complete, threw batteries in it, held this shut, and it worked just fine until I got it, you know, got it jury rigged, and here we go, and it works wonderful. The only drawback I didn't like about this is let me shut that off before. Oh, and you've got a on it. You've got a, an L for lock. Let's go over to the an A for for on basically. Then if you want to take if you want a uh, timer, 
you put, rotate it over to the S. But what I didn't like about this shutter is you had to really push your finger down inside, inside to get the, the button down inside to get it to trip. So I just had a friend of mine, you know, just do these little buttons and away we go. Then after, then after I did that, the first, the first shot I took with it, it like, oh yeah, paint, point that at the air. But, so, the other one I ended up, the one that didn't work, I ended up taking the winder off because my AE1 um, was, the winder was broken. So I, yeah, and if you've ever priced out a, a winder for an, AE, for an AE1, they're rather steep, about 40 bucks, and I think I paid 25 bucks for the pair of them. And so I'm money ahead because I didn't have to go buy any winder for my AE1 program. I absolutely love this camera. I run through, run two rolls through it before I even check to see if, before I even check to see if it took decent pictures. But I hurried in and printed these up last night. That's the guy on a, the, this guy on a bus. Wonderful guy, really nice. Kind of hard to tell if that's upside down or not. Um, side of this building up in Ogden. This is a really old house and this part right here used to be a balcony. And this was up like North Ogden and it used to be a bar and hotel back years and years ago. This is this wall. I can't even remember where this was. I thought it was really cool though. This old DeSoto. My wife really likes this picture and I don't know why. I mean, I really like it too, but I, I used to be into cars. So, yeah. This is this poor old falling down house. So you can see it meters the, meters the light really rather well focuses rather well. I think I'm going to make an 8 by 10 of this. I mean, those tracks just go off go off forever. So I think I'm going to um, make an 8 by 10 of that one. But, as you can tell, this camera takes really good pictures. It meters really well. Usually it doesn't have, it doesn't have an exposure compensation, but usually what I do is I'm, I'm running Delta 100 in it now. Ilford Delta 100 in it now, and I just set it, set it to like 125 or 133. Yeah, that ain't coming through. 125 or 123, and that will give me a little. Um, it kind of dark darkens. I like darker pictures instead of, you know, blaring pictures that you can't see, that you can't see like the sky. The sky is just white, even though it's brilliant blue with all kinds of all kinds of uh, clouds and stuff through it but and this little camera so I usually set it that way so this little camera um, this little camera came out in 82 and went to like about the first quarter of 85 um, at the same time they were building the AE1 program which is another wonderful camera um, everybody says that they're overrated. Eh, they shoot awesome pictures. Um, the T50, like I say, this is kind of, I think, the predecessor to the T50 because the T50 and the T70 um, take like, I think they both take double A's where this one takes triple. But still, they, they went away from that 4L44. Um, so it went from like 82 to about uh, first quarter of 85, the T70 was being built then, the new F1, the T50, the A1 program. So um, it had a lot of competition. If they hadn't, <laughs> these things would probably be highly collectible if they had made a decent battery door. But oh well, that's uh, great for me. And if you'll go to one of my other videos, sure that way. If you go to one of my other videos, I'll show you how to fix that. And then you can, and you can go get you an a, uh, an AL1 and shoot the hell out of it. There they go from about 
20 to $100. They actually make a black one that I'd really love, but they're about 150 bucks. I just, you know, on eBay. Um, I'd really love a black one. But, so yeah, we'll probably do an AV one next or my AE1 program. Until then, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, please.